This week on Machinery Pete TV. The Don Zuber auction has plenty of machinery ready to go to work, and this classic Alice Chalmers workhorse still has what it takes to get the job done. Pete has more examples of the runaway used equipment market. And Tyne Morgan finds out why a farmer's comfort zone may be getting in the way. Your machinery is a serious investment and at the heart of every farming operation. Some call it a passion. We're Machinery Pete TV, and today we'll cover everything from auction roundups to the classics to the latest trends and technology. Machinery Pete, the most trusted name in farm equipment. Machinery Pete thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. A&I Products is a lower cost, quality replacement part solution for all types and ages of ag equipment across all brands. Visit AIProducts.com. Well folks, we're getting close to the end of season nine of our Machine Repeat TV show and uh, thank you all for watching all these years. Appreciate all your support. And you know, through the years with the show, one thing I've tried hard to do is to provide a good variety of equipment. So different size, color, age, and I think we've got a fun uh, show full of variety for you today. We're going to watch a classic mid-70s tractor sell, and then a 10-year-old sprayer with low hours, and then an almost 30-year-old backhoe. And of course, we have a few other equipment surprises along the way for you. But one other thing we need to do before we get started is go back to the studio and catch up on the latest farm equipment news. All right, thanks, Pete. I'm Clinton Griffiths at this year's Top Producers Summit. National Farm Machinery Show also happening this past week in Louisville, Kentucky, as the Association of Equipment Manufacturers releases its top five trends to watch in 2022. Workforce challenges and solutions, AEM expecting older employees to retire and new employees may be hard to come by thanks to competition for workers and fewer applicants. Employees are also continuing to demand flexibility too. Bipartisanship in Washington, AEM pointing to the passage of the infrastructure bill and ultimately how it could impact workforce training and rural manufacturing. Three, supply chain management is going to continue being an issue in the year ahead, says AEM. From flame retardant chemistry to computer chips, supplies are expected to remain tight as economies restart following the pandemic. Four, speaking of COVID, employee safety will remain a major consideration in the year ahead. And the fifth trend for equipment manufacturers in 2022, using data for better decision and traceability in agriculture. While carbon markets and climate smart agriculture conversations fill the halls of Washington, equipment leaders are looking for ways to better track and manage precision benefits. Now, let's check on some recent auctions from around the country. Now back to our host, Machinery Pete. Hey, stay tuned folks. Coming up, we're going to zero in on used sprayer values and watch Don Zuber's 2012 Apache AS720 with 1132 hour cell. Hey folks, here with Matt Sullivan, Sullivan Auctioneers. Matt, you're one of the sharpest equipment guys that I talk to on a daily basis. No, don't give me that look. You are one of the sharpest dudes. Now, sprayers, uh, this is a nice rig. This is uh, 10 years old. It's a 12 model. Yep. Um, what's the backstory on, on this with Don, the owner? Yep, Don bought it one year old. Um, he's used it here on his farm, small acreage. It's a nice sprayer. Okay, 1,100 yep. and some hours on it? Yep. Okay. Now, Matt, I'm going to take you back in time. You personally used to work at the dealership, uh, Martin yep. Sullivan. Yep. That was back like 08 to 15? Yep, correct. Okay, so you saw a very hot period there when you were starting out, and then it cooled off. Yeah. So you used sprayers back 14, 15. That was a different story versus right now, isn't it? Totally different story. Yeah, I mean, you almost couldn't. It was tough. Exaggeration, you couldn't give them away, and no. now you can't get them. Right. Just total opposite. Yeah. yeah, we've been seeing hard cash auction prices on sprayers like this just yep. zoom higher. Absolutely. Uh, what have you been seeing end of 21 for? The same. We sold an Apache on our consignment sale for, I think, the highest uh, 
I think it was a record, I mean, the highest that, yep. you know, that had been sold. It was a really nice prayer, but mm. same old deal when, uh, when you're trying to make money, this is, this is how you make money on your farm. Right. So the availability is just driving, it's driving the bus right now, isn't it's it? Driving the bus right now. You know, I've only, I, I tell people only four times in my 32 years have I ever come out like I really advise a farmer to do something. Yep. And one of the, the third time I ever did it was early in 21. I said, if whatever you need, new or used, just get it because yep. you kind of see what was happening. Now, you guys, Sullivan Auctioneers, I mean, how many auctions did you have in, in 2021? Uh, 350. So 350 auctions, despite the, that huge volume, still it's about availability. Yep, it is. And, you know, equipment's going farther and farther. I mean, trucking is just less of an issue. You know, there's companies out there that you know are trusting and you can right. make a phone call or two and it shows up at your door. If we turn to the backhoe here, uh, nice rig, a 96.4, what is it, an F575E? Yep, just over 4,000 hours? Yep. Uh, you know, a 25-year-old backhoe like this with, with those hours, could be a lot of interest in this thing, man. It could be. It's an extended hoe, and it's a four-wheel drive, and that's about all you need, a full cab. It, uh, but it's a nice size. Yep. Yeah. Have you noticed uh, this type of uh, a backhoe uh, a rig the last couple years, would you say, has been going up in value? Yes. You know, like everything else, the new ones keep going up. The, a good quality farmer backhoe is hard to find. Right. And, uh, you know, like you said, you can, you can bid on it. And if you win it, you pay for it, you take it home, it's in your shed, you can use it the next day. Yeah, hard to find a 25-year-old uh, 4,000 hours for a second owner like this. They don't show up every day, do they? No, that's correct. Hard to find. I'm just curious, you know, you guys have gone online only now, but yeah. a farm auction like this, you know, sometimes I wonder if people assume like, oh, you just take a few pictures. But as I look around, I mean, there's tons of stuff here. How many times have you been down here? I would say this is probably at least my fourth trip and the auction's not over yet. So, right. yeah, it, uh, yeah we, we get it a lot. You know, everybody thinks uh, online only, it's easy. You know, that's every, oh, that's why you went to it. You know, it's, it's easy. You guys don't have to do, you don't have all the work. And it's, yeah. it's honestly the total opposite. Right. Um, you know, we still, you still have to wash it. You still clean it. You still have to catalog it and take all your pictures, but you take more pictures, you take some videos and, and then, and then like you said, all the small items, uh, right. when the farmer's retiring, that's still a huge part of the, huge. you know, of the puzzle. We, we cover all types of machinery with prices at machinerypeat.com, but I'm not getting down to the, <laughs> to the pallet level so much, but as I look at your guys' sales, Matt, it looks like the smaller items, I mean, you tell me if I'm wrong here, but sale price wise, they've lifted as much or more maybe as the, as the big stuff. Uh, for sure. The Tire Grabber is designed with your safety in mind, supporting your heavy lifting jobs with a heavy duty jack and tire handler duo. For farmers working to lift, change, and repair tires on their home farms, check out the Tire Grabber at thetiregrabber.com. What's that piece of equipment worth? Check out Machine Repeat's auction prices for the answer. Free to view, updated daily, all types of equipment. Go to machinerypeat.com and click on the auction tab, then auction price data. Hey folks, Machine Repeat here, reporting from the road. I'm out in California at the World Ag Expo. And I tell you what, trying to give you an update on what the farm equipment market has been like the past week is almost impossible. I mean, there are six or seven auctions that each deserve the spotlight. This market is like a huge runaway freight train going down a hill. The hill is getting steeper, and I tell you what, there is no end in sight. So let's just uh, zero in on a sale from last Thursday, February 10th, in Earl Park, Indiana, by the good folks at Trader Real Estate and Auction. And let me just bounce these sale prices off you to chew on. It's unbelievable. How about this? A 2011 John Deere 7530 Premium, 1938 hours. This thing sold for $167,000. Record high auction price. And you know what the record was? It was 118000 and that was from uh, 10 years ago. That one had a loader and only 689 hours on it. Just unbelievable. A couple other tractors on the sale. Another 11 model, this John Deere 94 34 wheel drive, just over 2,700 hours, went for 227,000 bucks, tied for the second highest auction price ever on a 94 30, tied with prices from back over 10 years ago. 
And how about this one? A 2012 John Deere 8310R. 3,780 hours. Went for 188,000 bucks. Second highest auction price ever on an 8310R with over 3,000 hours. And folks, the only higher one was just a couple months ago, November 29th, 2021, here in Iowa. How about a no-till drill? Try this on for size. A 2016 John Deere 1590 20-foot. This thing sold for 55750 bucks. And again, I'm a broken record. Record high auction price on a 20 foot John Deere 1590. The previous high auction price was 50K. That was eight years ago. And let's leave you with one tractor this 1998 John Deere 8400. Sharp looking rig, but it had over 6,700 hours on it, but it brought 86.5. Folks, that's the second highest auction price ever on a John Deere 8400 with over 6,500 hours. The only higher one, again, was back over 10 years ago. Hey, welcome back to Tractor Tales, folks. This week, a really cool story for you. We're headed to Illinois to learn about a classic Oliver Orchard tractor. Behind me here is a 770 Orchard that I bought a few years ago at Almond Auction. And it was restored at the time that I bought it. And uh, I ran it for a few years, and then I did a refresh job on it uh, about two years ago and had it completely repainted and went through and refreshed everything. And it makes an awful good uh, uh, parade, parade tractor. And uh, we have the uh, Arthur fireworks coming up and I pull the, uh, it's kind of a tradition, but I pull the big uh, bomb thrower as we call it. We have our own show here. And uh, so I always pull it through the parade and that's why it's an Arthur today. The uniqueness of being an orchard. Uh, in our area, we didn't have a lot of orchards. There was no need for it. This tractor was originally sold, had a bill card for it, and it was sold uh, to an orchard in Orlando, Florida. And so uh, that's where it came from. And, and I just thought it was a unique tractor, and that's what drew me to it. Well, they think it's from a space age uh, tractor of some kind because it looks like a spaceship. We're just gonna be, we do a lot of parades with it. Yes, so that's about all it does. It's, it's life is just parade. Yes, it was. It had been restored, and and like I say, I've had it for a number of years now. And uh, two years ago, it uh, it needed to be overhauled, and uh, so we went completely through the engine, the rear end, the transmission, and then when we were had it apart, we repainted everything and put it all back together. Uh, I believe it is a. 1965. Yes, <laughs> I had to look. I have yeah, too many. Yeah. The, basically, the, there's not the, the tires are not the original tires on it, of course. So no. that was that was done so that you wouldn't catch the, the, the limbs on the on the on the uh, fruit trees as you went down through the through the grove. Yeah, and that's why the shield was all done. Yeah, when you drive that, you would kind of like you're in a locomotive, and can you sit down and you sit real low in it? So it's a, it's a different perspective. Of, when you drive that versus a row crop tractor. It's retired, it is retired, yes. Well, I love mid-70s tractors, folks, and stay tuned, our feature item on the auction today, Don Zuber's beautiful 1974 Alice Chalmers 200. I think this thing could sell sky high. No other cornhead works like a Drago or pays you back like one. Visit your Drago dealer and see how you can justify owning a Drago on ROI alone. Find farm equipment on Machine Repeat's February 22nd online auction. No reserve, no buyer fees. Start bidding now at auctions.machinerepeat.com. Okay, folks, this is what you've been waiting for. Our feature item on the show today, beautiful orange paint, the 74 Alice 200. I'm here with owner Don Zuber. And Don, now you didn't buy this new. You bought it maybe 10, 10, 11, 10 11 years ago. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did you buy it from a farmer or a dealer? Or? No, I bought it from the local dealer. Okay. Who was that again? Uh, Leon Johnson at Herschel Johnson's in Albion, Illinois. Okay. And you had been running Alice tractors kind of your whole career on the farm here? Right. And you, you needed one more? <laughs> I guess, yes. And uh, boy, it's beautiful. I, I was just noticing the online bid here um, as we record this where how many days out before the sale? We're like three, four days out, and this thing's already getting pretty high. 
Don, I imagine you've been getting uh, a number of inquiries on this thing. Yes, I've, I've been getting a lot of calls on it. Would you say this tractor, of all the items on your auction, is this the number one thing people are calling about? Yeah, probably, yeah. Okay. Did that surprise you or not? Uh, not really. It's got that nice bright. It was painted just before I bought it, and okay. it kind of stands out. And yep. it's it's uh, it's not maybe really an antique, but it's at that stage where there's a lot of old royalists out there for the Alice Chalmer brand. That, are, you, that makes me feel old when we talk about mid '70s tractors being antiques, doesn't it? <laughs> but I well, know yeah. what you're, you're talking about. You're not the only one. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, but, and you have a lot of happy memories running Alice Chalmers tractors over the years. Yeah, if you can call work memories, yeah, yeah, or happy, but yes, yeah, yeah, satisfying memories. So how did you use the 200 on the farm here the last decade that you had it? Uh, mostly uh, I put blade on it, ditcher, and run augers with it, grain augers with it. it okay. It's main chore. Okay. Well, I, I saw this thing was already up to 9,000 uh, four or five days before the sale, which is, it's getting pretty high, so I think, uh, I think you're gonna have a wild finish here on your Alice 200 dock. From harvesting data to collecting ROI on ag tech investments, the biggest challenge in getting more farmers to adopt technology may be getting them out of their comfort zone. Ty and Morgan has the story. For the Elsinger brothers, technology continues to take shape on their Ohio farm. Advancements in technology today. We've gone from having the normal traditional corn planter to having a fully automatic corn planter that will pretty much do everything on its own. And tomorrow. So it's mind blowing. The Elsingers not only farm, but also sell ag tech. And even they say some technology takes time to adopt and then adapt. It was a learning curve, but it is, we're very comfortable using technology today. Benefits from savings on seed costs, a placing fertilizer exactly where it needs to be. Technology is absolutely helped us with our yield maps. We can create a better picture of what we need to, what fertilizers need to go where. We can use less fertilizer, less seed. These farmers are of the millennial generation and ones that see technology as a tool. As always, you're reluctant to try something new, but as you try it, you will learn more and more on how the benefits will be better in the end for everybody. The Elsingers say as they work with the older farmers in their area, comfort level is often the biggest barrier in trying something new. The older generation might be scared of the technology as the younger generation is more up to take it and try to run with it. Exploring various generations comfort level with ag tech today is something Kansas State University's Terry Griffin has spent a lot of time doing. We've been evaluating how farmers, farm operators of different generations behave um, with respect to commodity combinations, uh, number of acres, and use of technology. While it may seem obvious the younger generations are more willing to try ag tech, he says there are trends within the younger age groups he also tracks. One of the things that we have noticed between generations is that we have a few farm operators in Kansas who are of the Generation Z. He says Gen Z ranges in age from 6 to 24 years old today. And for those Gen Z farm operators, technology is often a one-take wonder. People in society of that generation have expectations that technology will work immediately. It's been said that for baby boomers and Gen X that technology has to be as simple as one, two, three. Well, those same sociologists would argue that for Gen Z, it has to be as easy as one. If it doesn't work the first time, you do not get a second or third chance to make it work. Griffin says as ag tech companies unveil new technologies, it's a trend they have to cater to. We can no longer push beta products out to the market. It must be fully functioning, plug and play, such that there's no requirement for human interaction. Well, folks, thanks for joining us today in Dundas, Illinois, for the online farm retirement auction for Don Zuber. And how about Don's 1974 Alice Chalmers 200? Sells for $14,250. That's actually the second highest auction price ever on an Alice 200. The only higher one I've ever seen came back on November 7th of 2015. Our good friends at uh, Mecham, their collector sale, Gone Farming. There was a, a 72 factory Wheatland that sold for $15,000. So again, Don's at 14 and a quarter. Really fun to get up close with that. And he told us how many phone calls he was getting. Uh, again, not surprised it sold so high. Now tune in next week, folks. We'll have some more sale price surprises for you here on Machinery Pete TV. Machinery Pete thanks these premier sponsors for their support.
Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. A&I Products is a lower cost, quality replacement part solution for all types and ages of ag equipment across all brands. Visit AIProducts.com.